Can someone spend his crypto more than one time? With normal fiat currencies, you know that you can spend your money one time only. Once you hand someone your cash, you can never spend it or get it again. But with cryptocurrencies, you may hear that some attackers may be able to spend their coins twice, which is known as double spending. So, is it actually possible for someone to do this? And if it is, then, how can it actually be done? Well, the answer here is yes, theoretically, it can be done, but, for an attacker to double spend his coins, he needs to attack the network with a 51% attack. This type of attack not only allows an attacker to spend his coins twice, but can also allow him to stop all transactions on the blockchain. Welcome to Cryptobi, where we explain cryptocurrencies and DeFi topics in the most simple and beginner-friendly way. In this video, you will know what is a 51% attack and how it actually happens. We will also explain what the attacker can do and what he can't do with this attack. And finally, we will talk about why this type of attack is very hard, almost impossible to try on big networks like Bitcoin. So let's get started. Before we explain 51% attacks, you first need to understand how transactions are verified on the Bitcoin blockchain. If you already understand how proof-of-work works, you can skip this part. So, you may know that a blockchain is simply a series or a chain of blocks, and each block is simply a list of transactions, as well as some other data. What is important for us here is that when you make a transaction, for example, sending one Bitcoin to a merchant to buy a car, this transaction gets added to many other unconfirmed transactions. On the Bitcoin network, there are a lot of computers responsible for verifying these transactions. These computers are called miners. So, a miner will gather some unconfirmed transactions, make sure that the transactions are valid, and that there are no fraudulent transactions, and then puts them into a block. For this block of transactions to be accepted on the Bitcoin blockchain, the miner needs first to solve a mathematical problem, which is trying to generate a correct hash. Don't get confused, we'll explain it very simply in a minute. But here you need to know that a lot of miners are doing all these steps at the same time. Each one of them has its block of transactions trying to get it accepted on the network. The miner who generates a correct hash first will get his block accepted and added to the Bitcoin blockchain. Let's now get to what is a hash and how are they trying to get a correct hash. So in cryptography, there is something called a hashing function or a hashing algorithm. You can think of this hashing algorithm as a black box that you can give it any data and it will use very complex math to give you a hash for this data, which is simply a series of 64 letters and numbers. The data you give it can be a single letter or an entire book, it won't matter, it will still give you a unique series of 64 letters and numbers for your data. A very important point here is that the hashes you get are not random, any data you give it has a unique hash, so if you input the same data a million times, you will always get the same hash, it will not change, no matter how many times you try. But if you change any tiny part in the input, then the black box will give you an entirely different hash. For example, if here we just put a capital letter instead of a small one, then we will get it a totally different hash. We actually have a full detailed video about hashing functions and how they are used in crypto if you want to learn more about them. But here what happens in Bitcoin is that the network will state its requirements for a correct hash. So for example, it may state that a correct hash needs to start with five zeros or seven zeros and so on. The more zeros at the beginning, the more difficult it gets to generate a correct hash. All the miners on the network are trying to get a correct hash, so a miner will try by taking its block of transactions, adding a random number to it, and then putting it into the hashing function to get a hash. As you can see, this hash doesn't start with any zeros, so the miner will try to get a new hash by changing the random number and trying again. And as you can see, this hash starts with five zeros, so the block will be accepted and added to the blockchain and the miner who got this hash will be rewarded in new bitcoins. This process of trying to generate correct hashes is known as mining, and in reality, it is very very hard, and each miner will try millions of times, and still, may not be able to get a correct hash. But generally, the faster your computer is, the more tries you can make in one second. So, that is why the mining power of a miner is measured in hashes per second. You may hear that the total Bitcoin hash rate is at 300 exa hashes per second. This total hash rate is the mining power of all miners on the network, 
and exa hashes here is equal to one quintillion hashes. This simply means that all miners on the Bitcoin network combined can try 300 quintillion hashes per second, which is an insane number of hashes, and still only one miner gets a correct hash every 10 minutes. Now you know how Bitcoin generally works, so what is a 51% attack? Well, a 51% attack is when an attacker owns or gets to control 51% or more of all the mining power on the network. This means that he has to have mining power more than all the other miners on the network combined. For example, if the total hash rate of all honest miners on the Bitcoin network is at 300 exa hashes per second, then the attacker needs to have miners with a combined hash rate of approximately 315 exa hashes per second, which makes the total 615 exa hashes, with the attacker controlling approximately 51%. Keep in mind that it doesn't have to be exactly 51%. The attacker just needs to control the majority of the mining power, as this will guarantee that he will be faster than the rest of the network in finding the correct hashes, that is why it is sometimes called a majority attack. Owning 51% of all mining power on the network can allow the attacker to spend the bitcoins he has twice, as well as some other things we will talk about in a minute. But here for example, the attacker may be able to send any coins he has to an exchange, sell them and withdraw the money in dollars. Then, he can attack the network and reverse the transaction where he sends the coins to the exchange. Now you may be wondering, how can the attacker reverse a transaction on Bitcoin? Well, to do this, he would first needs to do a lot of steps. First of all, the attacker needs to acquire mining power equal to all other miners on the network, like how we explained. Then, he will send his coins to an exchange and cash them out. After he does this, he will use the miners he has to start building a private chain that doesn't include the transaction where he sends his coins to the exchange. This new private chain will start from the latest block before the block that includes his spending transaction, and he will continue building it privately without telling any other miners on the network. Because he has more mining power than all the other miners, the attacker will be able to find correct block caches faster than everyone else, which means that eventually, his private chain will be longer than the public blockchain that the other honest miners are building. Once this happens, the attacker will announce his private chain to the rest of the miners on the network. In Bitcoin, the longest chain is always the valid chain. So, when the attacker announces his longer chain to the network, it gets accepted by the protocol and by the other miners and becomes the valid Bitcoin blockchain replacing the other one. On this new chain, the spending transaction of the attacker is not included, so the attacker will still have his Bitcoins on this new blockchain and of course, the dollars he cashed out when he sold the bitcoins at the beginning. So, he successfully spent his coins twice. Now let's talk about the other things the attacker can do with all this mining power. One thing the attacker can do here is prevent the confirmation of transactions from and to specific addresses. This is because when the attacker is producing blocks, he gets to choose which transactions he wants to include in the block, so he can very easily censor transactions. Even if another miner includes a transaction from one of these addresses, the attacker can simply choose to refuse or ignore the block and continue building on his blockchain, and because he is faster, his chain will eventually be longer, so it will be the valid chain and the blocks mined by the other miners will be discarded. Other than that, the attacker can even stop all the transactions on the network from being confirmed. To do this, he can mine empty blocks with no transactions. This is known as a denial-of-service attack and this may be done to break trust in a network, not to profit from it. Here also, any blocks that include transactions from other miners will be discarded, as the attacker is faster and his chain is the longer one. So, what if the attacker wants to profit, but without attacking the network? Well, he can actually do this through what is known as selfish mining. Here what happens is that the attacker will mine blocks normally, but he won't announce them to the network and will leave the other miners thinking that they are getting their block rewards. Because the attacker is faster, he has a higher chance of finding the correct hashes for the next blocks faster than all the other miners combined. So he will actually build his private chain faster, and once it is longer than the public chain, he announces it to the network to collect all the mining rewards for all these blocks. So it will be accepted, and as for the other miners, their work is wasted, and any block rewards they received will be reversed in the new blockchain as they will go to the attacker. So. Now you know what the attacker can do, but what about the things he can't do, even with all this mining power? So, first, he can't get new coins out of nowhere, he can only double spend his coins or earn the block rewards. Also, he can't steal coins from other users, 
Like for example, he can't make a transaction from your account to his account to steal your coins, any transactions included in the blocks need to be legitimate transactions, and for a transaction to be legitimate, it needs to be signed with your private key. So, he can't steal coins from you or from anyone else, other than the exchange, as they won't have their Bitcoin in the new blockchain like how we explained. Finally, he also can't reverse other users' transactions in very old blocks, these transactions are confirmed, and it is virtually impossible to reverse them. The only transactions that may get reversed are the transactions included in the blocks mined by other miners during the time he was building his private chain. So, now you may be wondering, can someone actually attack Bitcoin with a 51% attack? Well, there are some blockchains that were actually attacked before, like Bitcoin Gold and Ethereum Classic. But with Bitcoin, it is much, much harder. This is because it will be very hard for an attacker to get this much mining power. First, it is not available anywhere to rent this amount of mining power. So the attacker will need to actually buy the miners, but the problem here is that at the current total network cash rate, he would need to buy around 2,700,000 ant miner S19 Pro units. If we say that each miner will cost $4,000, then the total cost will be around $10.8 billion. Just to buy the miners, we still didn't talk about any electricity or maintenance fees. In reality, this huge sudden increase in the demand for miners will raise the prices significantly. And still, many people think that currently, manufacturers can't produce this large number of miners at the first place. So, it is very hard, almost impossible to buy enough miners to execute a 51% attack on Bitcoin. So, the only possible scenario here is large mining pools in China colluding and attacking the network. Technically, it can happen, but doing this will actually harm them and make them lose money. This is because the miners get paid their block rewards and transaction fees in Bitcoin. And if the Bitcoin network was attacked by the large mining pools, then it is inevitable that the price will fall. When that happens, the miners will lose a large percentage of their future revenue when they are selling their Bitcoin. Other than that, they already have made huge investments in miners with no other uses than mining Bitcoin. So, attacking Bitcoin will actually cost them more than what they may gain. Even if it happens, then, as a final security measure, the Bitcoin developers can actually modify the Bitcoin core software to instruct honest miners to ignore the attacker's blockchain. At the end of this video, we hope you learned what you need to know about the 51% attack. And if you liked our video, hit the like button, let us know in the comments if you have any questions or video ideas, and subscribe to our channel and turn on the notifications so you don't miss our new videos. Thanks for watching.